Welcome back, you're here with Nate28 and this is Cross Beats Production. So in this tutorial I want to show you guys on how to make a Drake style filter with uh, stock plugins within Studio One. If you're not wanting to spend any money and buy other plugins that do this kind of thing, this is the way that you can pretty much achieve the same kind of sound and even a little bit of an altered sound. So hang around for this video, it's going to teach you a lot about how to do that and using automation, using EQ, using a bit crusher and a flanger, I'll show you exactly how to create that Drake style filter. So hang around for this next one. back and this is Nate to wait and if you didn't know this is cross beats production this tutorial that I want to show you was basically using EQ a bit crusher a flanger and a bit of automation to create some some filter style tricks with this this particular beat so if I play this beat out to you I'll just show you what I've created so far and I'll and I'll just focus your eyes on the filter for example the EQ uh, not so much a bit crusher because you can't see that much going on with that, but just focus on the EQ and watch how the filter uh, reacts with the um, automation that I've created and also the flanger. Listen to that effect as well and pay attention to it. And I'll show you also another part of the beat where it gives a kind of a, a pause kind of drop style kind of thing as well. So let me just play this to you and uh, I'll show you exactly how I did it and explain it all to you. So pretty much what's happening at the moment is um, there's a couple of things going on. So if you paid attention to the EQ and you watched how the EQ was affecting certain parts of the top end of the mix and it had a filter that I created as well which moved across the EQ. Now it's not all that difficult to do it. This I guess could be more of an advanced kind of style move if you don't understand how EQs work and how automation works. But if you look at it and you break it down it's actually quite a simple move to make so it only took me about maybe 20 minutes to get it all set up and get this kind of uh, situation happening with the filters and things like that now what I did um, so I so I could keep some of the sounds out of the actual uh, the filtering process what I did was create buses for my my tracks now I put my drums into a bus I put a main bus which I've created which is just solely on its own and that's pretty much the one in purple so the main bus is basically the one that's getting all the filtering and all that sort of stuff bit crushing and flandering happening to it um, but I've automated it so it's not entirely on the whole entire mix it's only in sections so if you pay attention here I've labeled all of these things here and the filters and the and the cutoff and the um, bit crush and bit depth and the main bus. I'll just move that main bus there because that's the final out on the track there altogether. I'll make that a purple color so it matches the main bus there. So basically what I did was as I was saying before I, I created automation so that the tracks automate themselves and then it comes back and that's all the effects are basically off. This part here where you hear the the kind of a, a slowdown, almost a slowdown effect but it's not really a slowdown effect all it is is just a filter cut off which I've used a low pass and the filter to make that effect. If you watch the EQ, I'll just quickly play that section there. As you can see, the EQ, it totally cut off all the top end and moved really fast towards the, um, the, the top end of the mix there. And it obviously introduced all the, 
top end back into it. It's kind of like if you think of um, thunder in that sense, uh, it depends on how far away you are from thunder and lightning. Uh, if you know, what is what I'm talking about? It depends on how far away you are from it as to how much top end of the the crack of the thunder that you'll hear versus the the bottom end, low end, really rumble stuff. If you're a long way away, you won't hear as much rumble. If you're closer, of course, you're going to hear a lot of rumble. So if you think of it in that respect, um, it's kind of the same kind of theory in that process uh, that, that you kind of got to think about. But anyway, cutting this to the reason how I'm creating this and how I'm going to do what I'm doing. So basically what I did was, as, as you can see here, I've set up a bit crusher and I'll just kind of zoom in a bit more on this automation as to what's going on here. And I'll get rid of the, the mixer there. Now, actually, maybe I'll just bring the mixer up and move it down a bit so you guys can see some of the automation and, and understand what's going on. All right, so there we go. So with the automation, as you can see with the low pass filter, I'll just show you how that's working on its own. Now, um, basically all I did was set up a low pass filter at uh, minus 36 dB. And that's the octave, sorry, octave. 36 dB and it basically is set so the way that you set this filter up with the automation is you click on that button alone and you can go up here there's a little thumb button here and if you want to drag down I won't do it right now I'll just let me minimize that so if I was to drag down another automation file there I could hit that little thumb thing drag it down and that would give me another automation lane I'll just get rid of it because I don't need it but Basically, that's the way that you can create automation. So if you click on a plugin, that's a Studio One plugin. It works with third-party third plugins as well, but it seems to work a lot easier with Studio One plugins because I guess they're designed to do this. Um, so if you, like I said, if you just click on your filter there, that's a high, a low-pass filter. Sorry, click on that. You can bring it all the way up wherever you, wherever you want it to be at, and then uh, click your little thumb thing, drag it down, and that creates your uh, your automation lane and it's right there and it's quite easy then to start creating uh, creative filters and things like that so all I did was to create the automation and I'll just explain it to you briefly was I'll just move this up here because it's just turned off this one here so I'll just remove that track relabel that low pass skido pass um, all right so that's my low pass as you can see As you can see how the low pass just worked on its own and um, with the with the automation I've just drawn that automation so it goes down slowly till it gets to about 200 Hertz because it kind of you don't want to remove much more than that if you if you remove too much of the mid-range frequencies you probably won't hear much of the low end and that's kind of why this filter here starts to bring up some of the the mid-range frequencies on its own and what that would be is is more like a um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that the filters that you can get, I'll explain it to you actually, I'll show you in, in a way that makes sense. So basically the resonation filter or a reso filter, this is what's on this plugin. So if you were going to do the effect and you had this plugin, this plugin's called Decimort 2. You can basically do the effect a lot easier, not using automation and stuff like that, but because you can pretty much resample your, your stuff and create that bit crush sound and you can use this cutoff filter here and set it to low pass and then you can create a reso filter and just drag that filter down using automation that's pretty much it that would create the same effect but if you don't have this plugin that's kind of why I'm showing you how to do it without that plugin but by all means get that plugin if you if you're looking at using um, Decimort it definitely helps you there um, so anyway let me just go back to having my low pass filter and stuff with that and we'll just quickly show you So as you can see, it moves a little bit differently. It depends on how you set the automation with the filter. That's why I called it a filter because all I did was I created a, 
I guess we, your resonation filter, just the same as the other plugin would have done, it's basically the exact same thing. Uh, it's just creating it in an EQ style fashion and you can see what's happening instead of just a blind sided reso filter. But anyway, that's, that's the way that I created that sound. So as you can see, it cuts off the, the top end. works like that the other thing I did was with the EQ um, this is the EQ on and off so I've just had an automation where it sets the EQ to on and off and that's basically all that does then the next thing was a bit crusher so the reason why I put a bit crusher on here and a down sample was to create that same kind of down sample effect that you hear from the Drake kind of style tracks and things like that um, he probably would use a plugin I guess more like decimal which I showed you before now with the the flanger the reason why i put a flanger on here and the reason why i put a bit crusher like i was saying because the bit crusher gives a bit more distortion and sound that you wouldn't normally get kind of like down sampling your track and making it sound i guess retro or old school and things like that so if you're looking for that old school kind of listening kind of feel then as you can hear here It adds kind of like some white noise kind of background sound and that's really crucial I guess if you're looking for that vinyl kind of sampled drum kind of sound. Now as you can see here it's kind of all over the place. The automation it's up and down, up and down, up and down. Now all I did was I just moved this dial around with the function set to touch. If it wants to go there. So it's set to touch and I just moved this up and down to 12, 10, 12, 10, 8. Kind of like just moved around because it gives me a bit of that retro sound and it's only at the start of the track. It's not through the whole entire track. I just did that so it sounds a bit, you know, a really sampled kind of track going on right there. And that's on the entire mix. So if you look, it's actually on the bus and that's the main bus. The only thing that's not being affected is my piano, which I'll just relabel that piano. And um, the piano I've bypassed the entire mains and I've just sent it straight to the the main out here as you can see there and uh, that's the only thing that's going straight to the main out so none of the bit crushing none of the EQ none of the filtering is going on that piano so it doesn't take out all of the tracks in one set of filtering it's just taking out the majority that I've put into that bus so that's why buses are handy to set up the only um, I guess way that you can avoid filtering stuff in this particular situation is actually creating a bus or creating an FX send and then putting everything to your FX send. Uh, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, all I'm saying is what a bus is, it's just highlighting something on here which call, is added bus, it's called add a bus to a channel. All it does was created a bus on its own, it's labeled bus 1 because that's what it's originally labeled as as a default. And then all you have to do to get your things transferred to it. So say you relabel your bus, call it hall for reverb or whatever, hall verb. Uh, whoop. Verb might help or whatever. Anyway, we'll call it hover, hall ver, and just transfer these into that. So that's all you have to do. If you want to create a bus and you transfer your, your sounds into that bus, that's pretty much straightforward. And that will do the... Um, the bus for you so I mean basically I'll remove that the other way to do it is if you had say for example a sound that you want to put into a bus or a group of sounds all you have to do is highlight one of them if you're on an Apple computer hit shift and then press the bottom track and again right click and then you can just send it straight to a bus channel and that will do that that's exactly how I created my drum bus and pretty much started from there so long story short I hope this helps you out, this guide on how to create that Drake effect. And if there's any questions, definitely let me know in the comments. But I mean, using stock plugins, this is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, I guess it's probably the only way to do it with stock plugins within Studio One at least. And if you want to use Decimal, I'll show you on that on another video. I'll show you how to do that and I'll show you how to set it up with all the automation. But I'll pretty much... I tried to want, I guess I wanted to show you guys how to do it using stock plugins because not everybody can afford to buy Decimal or ex any kind of VST for that matter. And if you've already paid $300 for this DAW, you may want to use it just with what it's got. So I uh, hope, this, hope this video is very helpful for you guys and otherwise uh, I'll let you go on this one and peace.